do you have a closer this year or someone you'd like to be uh, the closer this year? No, you know, not there's there's not that prototypical guy that comes in in the eighth or or, or ninth inning to close it out. Uh, Jensen would be uh, a viable candidate because he would come in from second base and you would allow him to close the game and, and not really have to deal with, you know, moving him back to second base. If, you know, if he came in early in the game and had to, you know, through his, his two innings and had to be moved back to second base, then you, you're creating some problems from an offensive standpoint. Uh, Frankie Reed is is kind of a candidate. Frankie's really looking good. He's he's kind of been our most consistent guy out of the bullpen right now, and he's just living with a with a fastball. But he's got some life to it, and he's going to get better throughout the course of the season because he'll his secondary pitches will will, will hopefully get uh, better as you know as the season rolls along. Uh, give me a little nutshell on what kind of pitcher Matt Jensen is. I've never seen him throw. Matt's a uh, you know, upper 80s, fastball, uh, you know, mid to upper uh, 70s slider and a, and a real good changeup. So he's got the th three different velocities and, and uh, you know, hasn't pitched in, a, in a, a real game situation since his senior year in high school. But uh, we, I, th I just think he's needed. I just think he's that much better than some of the guys that are, you know, number 9, 10, 11, 12 on our on our staff, you know, he fits up. Right now, without Fishbeck, we probably have seven quality guys that I feel comfortable and I trust going to, and he's one of those seven. You have your three starters and your, your four bullpen pitchers that I mentioned, and, and those guys for right now, you know, are, are going to get the first chances and be, uh, you know, rehashed over and over, and then hopefully you can get somebody like Jeff Johnson to pick up that eighth role. And you explain to him that it's a, it's a leapfrog situation during the course of the, the season to where, you know, you may be, you know, number four on the depth chart, and uh, you may get passed up by somebody that was number 11 last week because they got they came in, got a good, good outing, they get another chance, and that's just how how things work. Usually, that that lineup you throw out that first day in the the regular season is never the same lineup at the end of the season. Did you recruit Matt as a pitcher, and then you? He, you know what? Uh, in actuality, me personally, I did. Uh, Jesse and I both saw him. Uh, Matt at 234 his junior year in high school, and uh, um, and so Jesse had seen saw Matt first and, and uh, liked him uh, as a position player. Thought he needed to do a couple of things uh, mechanically, and then I I went over there to watch him you know, specifically for pitching. His pitching is is what you really need. And you know, I saw an athlete that had three quality pitches that tried to um, you know, predict uh, how he would be in the future. And I, I really didn't know what we had until uh, the, you know I, I saw him in a batting cage, you know, on the field uh, the first day we started working with him. And I, I saw some the bat speed and how the ball jumped off his bat. And then we started working him mechanically, how he was able to pick up things, and then. When he started playing in some of our fall inner squads, uh, you know there was a pretty different uh, mindset. And then when the, the lights went out for real against Rice last year, I mean his first collegiate at bat he struck out against a you know, preseason All American pitcher, and the second at bat he hits a home run over the dead center. And, and uh, what what separates him, you know, w whether it's, it's on the mound or or in the field, is just his, his his makeup. You know he has. He wants the ball, and, and uh, so I mean, first time we throw him out there, it might be a little bit uh, different for him, but hopefully he can get that mindset of, of you know wanting the ball and, and just closing out a game. I know you just said a couple minutes ago that your lineup opening day changes throughout the season, but as far as who are going to be your your nine starters out out there in front, if you know yet or I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, behind the plate it'll be uh, Brayton and, and Stewart. At uh, first base, we're hoping to get uh, Van Ostrand back. Uh, if not, uh, uh, Brayton will play first base. Uh, Evan Busby uh, will play first base. Evan's kind of our, our swing infielder. We have him at first, second, and third base as, as a, a backup type of a player. Jensen will be at second. Miller at short. J.J. Thompson will be at third base. And then uh, D.J. Gentile will, will D.H. along with uh, uh, Luke Yoder. Uh, and then possibly, you know, a Brayton or a Van Ostrand. And then the outfield's really loaded. I mean, you have uh, 
uh, Bobby Crocker, Adam Melker, and, and uh, Mitch Hanniger, uh, along with Yoder. So um, it, it's, it, it's actually a, a good situation to have if everybody's healthy because uh, you know, nobody can you know, rest on what they did the, the previous game. They have to continue to prove themselves each and every game, each and every weekend. And, you know, that, that's, that, that's healthy competition. So we're hoping to probably have 12 or 13 players in that mix for, for a starting job uh, on any particular game. And uh, if that's the case, then it will be, be very healthy for us. Thanks, Coach.